Yo guys, how's everyone doing? It's DJ Slider here, and today we'll be doing another what if. Today's what if is one I came up with while thinking of an idea for a similar what if, also revolving around Piccolo. Before we jump into the what if, I should actually mention that um, for this what if, I tried to do something a little bit different. So while scripting, I decided to go slightly more in depth than I usually would. So be sure to tell me if you like this new style, or would rather me brushing over the smaller details. Anyways, let's get straight into the what if. Alright, so this what if starts in between the Battle of God Saga and the resurrection of f -Frog. Around the time Wiz arrives and decides to train for Vita, Piccolo would fly to Wiz's location or to be notified by Dende of his whereabouts, and curious as to why Wiz would be on the bottom earth and at Capsule Corp of all places. He'd also be able to hear a bit of what had just happened as he approached the vicinity and heard how Vegeta offered foods. Once arriving, he would ask what was going on and would be told by Wiz that he had decided to take on Vegeta to train him. Upon hearing this, Piccolo would also ask to be trained. You see, in this what if, after witnessing Goku become a Super Saiyan God and go toe to toe with Beerus, it was not only Vegeta who now had a new level to strive for, but also Piccolo, as he had learned through that bout, you know, the bout that he had a bit against Beerus, that if Goku is away from Earth and evil attacks, they will not be able to defend it at their current level. To do this, as mentioned before, Piccolo decides to aim to obtain this new level of power and sees this as the best way to do so. Unfortunately, Wiz shuts him down by declining, unless he wishes to become a god of destruction, as he sees potential in him to do so. Piccolo, after contemplating whether or not he should accept his condition, says no, but asks if there is any other way to be given access to train. Wiz would then say only if he can find a food which is equal to or surpasses the instant ramen Vegeta had given him. Piccolo would, similarly to Vegeta, go around searching for a food for Wiz. He would return with a bag full of hot taiyaki. Alright, so I can't lie. I chose taiyaki as I personally find it funny, you know, picturing Piccolo holding a bunch of taiyaki desperate to be trained. After tasting it, Wiz would, you know, have one of his food or orgasms and exclaim that it's really good and allow Piccolo to accompany Fujio to Beerus' planet to train. On their way, Wiz would ask each of them what they hoped to get out of this training. Vegeta would say he needs to surpass Kakua, while Piccolo would say that he realised that, that if a threat appears and Goku isn't there, then the Earth is as good as dead, so he would need to obtain this god or whatever in order to protect it. He would also admit that he needed it to not be left far behind Goku. Wiz would nod, acknowledging both their points, and would keep it in mind as they arrived to Beerus' planet. From here, they would begin their training and would both see promising results which would far outweigh those Vegeta received in main canon. This would be because Vegeta is quite similar to Piccolo in that neither one would want to be left behind so they would push each other to complete the chores that they are assigned faster and become stronger quicker than Vegeta did in the main canon. Due to this, I believe they would begin training with Wiz earlier than in the main canon. Also, as they have similar personalities and mindset, I believe Vegeta and Piccolo would grow to have a mutual respect for one another's abilities, which would eventually become a friendship. By the time six months had passed and Goku arrives, unlike in the main canon where Vegeta was able to catch up to Goku and may have possibly surpassed him, here they would both definitely be stronger than him, with Vegeta being the strongest, followed by Piccolo, then Goku. So at this point, Vegeta would be stronger than Goku, with Piccolo I would say not too far behind Vegeta, but a bit stronger than Goku. So Goku would have to work a bit harder to catch up to these two, but I believe he would be able to do so within the first month or two of his training. Meanwhile, on Earth, Freezer would have just been resurrected, and without Piccolo there to notice anything, nobody would bat an eye. Freezer would begin his training. During Piccolo, Vegeta and Goku sparred with Wiz. Vegeta would become frustrated with Piccolo saying he was getting in the way and planning too much, to which Piccolo would respond by saying he was actually the one coming closest to landing attacks on Wiz, as he was actually thinking and executing proper plans, rather than repeatedly punching and kicking, hoping one would land. This back and forth would eventually escalate to a little spa before Goku would have to step in to stop them. Although during this, Beerus would have woken up and he and Wiz would see that Piccolo, Fujita and Goku had become far stronger than before, and would grant them access to training Wiz as staff. Them gaining access to Wizard's staff this early allows for them to all gain access to God Key a lot earlier than they did in main canon. This gives them more time to train with this newfound key, and with the addition of Piccolo being there also gaining God Key, he would be able to suggest to them ways they could utilize their God Key, which they may have not thought of. By the time of Freezer's arrival, Goku and Vegeta would still be training on Beerus' planet to maintain and master their God Key. I believe Piccolo would be on Earth as he still had duties which had to be done, such as assisting Dende with tasks 
helping out Gohan and the Son family, etc. So he would be going back and forth to Earth every now and then, so he'd be present when Freezer attacks. Piccolo, Tien, Gohan, Krillin and Roshi would meet up with Bulma and Jacko, already at the spot Freezer and his army would arrive at. This would give the remaining Sea Fighters some time to plan ahead. Soon enough, Freezer would arrive, and like in the main canon, would begin to send his troops out to deal with the Sea Fighters. But this is where the story would begin to differ. The Sea Fighters, other than Piccolo and Gohan, would go all out on the soldiers, truly testing their limits and fighting with everything they had against the ones that could take it, and just knocking out those that couldn't. Wait, what? Hold up Nitro, why are they going all out? Wouldn't they just do what they did in the main canon and stick to their divide and conquer tactics? Okay, let me explain. Those tactics were devised specifically to give the Sea Fighters a chance against these enemies while conserving as much energy as possible to be used later so they could buy time for Goku and Vegeta to arrive. They were trying to take as many as they could out to make Goku and Vegeta's job easier, but now that they've got a god tier Piccolo on their side, there would be no need for them to do this. So they would instead focus on fighting and just testing their powers to see where they were currently at in terms of power. After a few more hundred of Fusion soldiers get beat, Piccolo would begin to notice Tien, Krillin and Roshi's attacks beginning to become a bit sloppy and would call them before shooting a key blast into the air, detonating it shortly after and launching a Masenko. This was the signal. After noticing this, they would all retreat back to their starting location and wait for more soldiers to attack. Frieza, seeing this as a mockery and insult, would send another wave in to attack. Big mistake. Everyone other than Krillin would fly up while Krillin launched a scatter beam at nearby borders and rocks, creating a smoke screen. Tien would launch a slow solar flare, blinding those who weren't affected by Krillin's attack. Master Roshi would then buff himself up and launch a massive Kamehameha at these enemies, taking a large majority of them out. By the time the smoke had cleared, Frieza and the few hundred left would see the sea fighters standing ahead of the many soldiers that lay on the floor. It was as if it were a warning, saying, come and you'll get this next. Frieza, now frustrated, would send in the rest of his army. As they charged, Gohan would look to Piccolo and they would nod in unison, before both powering up, with Gohan going into his Super Saiyan state and Piccolo using his full power, not yet using God Key though. They would blitz through the army, leaving them all knocked out in a few seconds. Now, it was just Frieza. He looked to Gohan, shocked and surprised that he was able to transform into a Super Saiyan 2, but he wasn't his target. Next, he looked to Piccolo and chuckled. He would say it was both surprising and amusing that the Namekian he had beaten and almost tortured to death of Namek had returned, with a vengeance at that, but Piccolo's expression hadn't changed. Gohan would be about to step forward, but would be stopped by Piccolo, who would remind him that he hadn't kept up with his training, and would advise him not to be fooled by Frieza's current mood, as he could tell that he had gone to a new level. He would say he'll deal with this, before beginning to fly towards Frieza. Frieza would levitate out of his hover chair and come to face Piccolo. They would be opposite each other, this face-off being reminiscent of their one anamic. Piccolo, not wanting to play any games, would advise for Frieza to power up so they could get this over with. That would have ticked Frieza off and he would go straight into his final form before clashing with the Namekian. This clash would be similar to how Goku and he did in the main canon. They would begin a series of high speed attacks with each one causing shockwave upon shockwave. The sea fighters would watch in awe as this amazing clash of superpowers happened before them. They would begin to chat amongst themselves, seeing Piccolo and Frieza's battle as a battle of equal powers. But soon it would become clear who was winning as Piccolo would begin to grow tired of this charade. He would launch an attack, sending Frieza flying backwards. When Frieza recovered, he would feel an outstretched arm wrap around his leg and put him there, sending him crashing into the earth. Piccolo would descend to Frieza and say he thought he told him to power up already so they could get this over with. Frieza would respond by saying, incoming bad voice imitation, My my, aren't we impatient today? Oh well, if you want to accelerate your demise then so be it. Behold! After transforming, everyone would be amazed at how strong Frieza had gotten. Gohan would shout to Piccolo, asking if he had this, and Piccolo would smirk, responding with a yeah, before beginning to emit God Key. He would then exert a large amount, with it covering over him. When it dissipates, we would see Piccolo looking slightly more youthful, surrounded in God Key. Wait, 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 what's Piccolo doing? Nitro, please explain. Oh yeah, I haven't explained this form or my reasoning for it. 
Alright, so for Piccolo Gear and God Key, I decided not to give him a new form of transformation that would fastly change his appearance. I did this as in the anime, Namekians don't really have any crazy forms of transformations as it is, so I didn't want to, I didn't really want to suddenly give Piccolo a crazy new form with loads of different aesthetic changes just because he had gotten God Key. And I feel as if this would make more sense and stay in line with what we've already seen with Namekians and Toriyama. Also, I kind of wanted to stick with the whole simplistic approach Toriyama was going for when he was designing Super Saiyan God Goku. Anyway, back to the way. The Sea Fighters would be in awe of Piccolo's new form as they would feel a ferocious power but not be able to sense any key from him. Kudum would ask if this was Piccolo and God Key and ask what to call it and Gohan would respond with its name and tell him Piccolo had told him about it but he had never actually seen it. This was his Namekian God form. They would then see Piccolo disappear before Freezer would do the same and would feel the impact and would feel the impact of their clashes but would no longer be able to see them. I'd say Piccolo in his Namekian God form would be stronger than Goku's Super Saiyan God form in canon but not at Super Saiyan Blue's level yet. Although he would be close thanks to all the training he had done against Goku and Vegeta. So although God of Freezer would have the edge over him in strength, I believe Piccolo would be able to use his battle intellect to level the playing field. Tien would say, so this is the level they're currently at huh? Astonishing. Master Oshu would comment on Piccolo seeming even faster and stronger than Goku when he had fought Beerus. Krillin would mutter that if the gap between them had widened this much, imagine how much it had with the others. Gohan would suddenly transform into a Super Saiyan, it helping him track down what was happening within the fight. He would now be able to actually follow what was happening, if just a bit. Back to the fight, Piccolo and Frieza would be matching each other in power and speed, still clashing with one another. They would be about to go for another clash, but Piccolo would feint and attack before dodging Freezer's attack at the last second. Giving himself an opening, Piccolo would use it, unleashing a large series of precise and well-aimed punches to Freezer before ending the combo with an uppercut, sending Freezer into the air. He would charge after Freezer, launching an outstretched arm to Freezer's leg, but as he would reach it, it would get caught off by a death slicer Freezer had just launched. Freezer would taunt Piccolo for trying the same move twice, but would be hit by a key blast from the severed hand, temporarily blinding him. Piccolo would fly up and deliver a powerful kick to the side of Freezer's head, sending him flying back. As Piccolo would reach out for the severed arm, he would again be caught by the returning Death Slicer, just about moving out of its way, but not before it took his other arm clean off. He would look up to the Death Slicer and launch an eye beam at it, destroying it. Freezer would laugh in the distance, humoured at the sight of an armless Piccolo. Freezer would stop laughing before telling Piccolo, as fun as this has been, it was now time to end this, and would prepare to launch a Death Beam at Piccolo. Suddenly, a voice would be heard in the distance. Hey Piccolo, seems you need some help. You want me to take over now? Everyone would turn to see two red-haired Saiyans who were standing behind the sea fighters watching an ongoing battle. It was Goku and Vegeta. Remember earlier when I mentioned that when training, Piccolo being there may change things? Well, this is what I was referring to. With Piccolo there, they would have another person to talk to and discuss battle tactics and strategies with. I believe Piccolo would have suggested that it would be better for them to focus on mastering their god forms before instantly searching for the next level of beyond Super Saiyan God. So they instead trained on working on their god forms. This will, obviously, result in there being no Super Saiyan Blue, or at least for now. And instead, their god forms will be far stronger than their Kang counterparts. Alright, for the last time, back to the fight. Piccolo, after regenerating his arms, would chuckle at Goku's request to switch out and respond, saying he was only stalling for time so Goku could arrive and see Freezer's new power. He would begin to get angry at the stalling remark and at Goku for being present and shoot a death beam at Goku, which Piccolo would teleport in front of and deflect. Piccolo would then turn to Freezer and say he was right about one thing. He would then say it is time for the fight to end now, although he wouldn't be the one to end it. As he flies away from the battle to the sidelines, Everyone would look to Piccolo, wondering what was going on, all apart from Vegeta that is. He would fly towards Freezer, and as he and Piccolo crossed paths, Vegeta would nod his way, almost as if to say, thanks. Piccolo would nod, ba nod back in response. Vegeta, after arriving to the battlefield, would then proceed to demolish Freezer. He would unleash wave after wave, attack after attack. He would not allow Freezer any time to recover, nor would he give him any time to regain his footing. He would be aware of the slight edge Golden Freezer would have over his Super Saiyan God form, and so he would not give Freezer any time to get upper hand. Freezer would attempt to wrap his tail around Vegeta's neck to buy himself some time, but Vegeta would intercept, grabbing his tail and crushing it before using it to swing Freezer around and throw him into a wall. Freezer, due to all the impact and damage he had just received, would power down into his final form as he had used up all his time. Vegeta, without hesitation, would appear before Freezer with his hands out. Freezer would look up to Vegeta in horror as Vegeta would smirk before blasting away Freezer 
obliterating him. After defeating Frieza, Vegeta would return to the sidelines where everyone was left. The Sea Fighters would all be amazed by the power they had just seen before them and would realise how much the gap had widened. This comes into play later, so keep that in mind. Goku and Piccolo would come over to Vegeta, with Goku congratulating Vegeta on his victory and Piccolo on his battle. After having a short reunion with the rest of the Sea Fighters, Goku, Piccolo and Vegeta would be about to leave to head back to Beerus' planet but Piccolo would be stopped by Gohan. He would request to be trained by him again and Piccolo would accept. Goku and Vegeta would go back to Beerus' planet to resume their training. Shortly after this, a fat purple cat would approach the planet while the two Saiyans were training. What does this fat purple cat want? And why does he look so similar to Beerus? I guess we'll find out in the next part of this what if. Alright guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that what if. If you did, don't forget to leave a like, share this video and, a, and above all subscribe. Don't forget to leave feedback as well. I Feedback would be much appreciated. As you guys know, I'm still new to this whole what if thing. So feedback, you know, it will be greatly appreciated because that helps me, that will help me produce better what if, better videos. And yeah, tell me how you guys enjoyed this uh, new style of the what if, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, where instead of, you know, brushing through the resurrection of F arc, I actually like, you know, went in depth with the fights and the sea fighters and yeah, just tell me, tell me what you guys think about that. If you guys would rather that or just, you know, the style I'd on my previous video where I just, you know, kind of brush over the things that aren't really as necessary. But yeah, with that all said, hope you guys enjoyed the what if, this what if and we'll look forward to the next part. Peace out, guys.